Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about performance brake pads and there's really seven key focus areas uh, when looking into brake pads. Cold performance, hot performance, how wide is that temperature range, pad wear, rotor wear due to the pad selection that you make, uh, and then depending on the application, noise and dust may matter as well. So looking at a brake pad here, uh, several things going on. Some common features you may see, uh, chamfer on the ends, and that's to improve engagement and also help reduce brake noise. Uh, you also may have slots, pretty much all of them will probably have slots, uh, and this is to help remove debris from the pad or the rotor wearing, and also so that when your pad expands uh, from heating up so much, it prevents cracking within it, so it has a little bit of space to expand. Underneath you may have an under layer and there's multiple roles that this can play and there can be multiple layers as well uh, But basically you're going to want to insulate your brake calipers so you don't heat up your brake caliper uh, And then heat up the brake fluid you want to try and prevent that and it also aids in bonding between the brake pad and the backing plate and then of course you have the backing plate and this helps hold the brake pad in place in your caliper. So a performance change you might go with is larger pads. So if you upgrade to larger calipers with more pistons, you can use larger pads. So why would you wanna use a larger pad? Well, you're gonna have reduced pad wear because you've got more material overall and you're also gonna have better fade characteristics because you're distributing uh, heat across a larger amount of uh, material versus if you have a smaller pad. Now the one thing to note is that if you do use larger pads, you're you're going to be covering up that section of the brake disc so you're not going to have as much airflow over that section of the brake disc and it could impact the cooling of the brake disc so it's not always necessarily the best uh, it's not like you want just a massive caliper that goes all the way around the entire disc as you wouldn't have anywhere to reject the heat so you do need some airflow but ultimately larger pads are going to give you uh, less pad wear and better fade characteristics so there's all kinds of materials out there uh, that are going to be used in brake pads. I just listed a few ceramic asbestos, which are no longer really used. Semi-metallic, carbon-carbon, some other examples. There's all kinds of materials out there. That's not really that important for the consumer to know necessarily about the material. What's more important is this graph right here, which is the coefficient of friction versus the temperature of the pad. So, as different pads are gonna have different characteristics, a lot of that due to the material selection. And so, something like your family car, you know, it's gonna have a high coefficient of friction at basically low temperatures. So right when you get on the pad, you're not braking as much uh, in street cars as you are in a race, uh, and you're not getting it to as high as temperatures. So you want high cold friction, and then this performance kind of tapers off. So if you go down a really long hill, you can notice some brake fade in your uh, cars. That's why they recommend using uh, gearing to brake your car, uh, because these brake pads will start to get too hot, uh, and then the coefficient of friction drops dramatically, and then you won't really have that good of brakes. So uh, something used in racing will look very different where the coefficient of friction may be very low at cold, but that doesn't matter because it, once they get up to operating temperature, that's the range they're gonna stay in throughout the whole race. So something that has, you know, depending on the race and how much braking is involved, you may want something that has uh, better friction coefficients at a lower temperature or at a higher temperature or something that's just very consistent throughout. So there'll be all kinds of different variations. And actually the pad manufacturers, if you're looking at buying these, a lot of them will show you this graph so you can, you know, get the pad exactly for the application that you want. If you know there's gonna be a ton of braking and you want it to be consistent, you know, getting something with a flatter curve at higher temperatures. Now with street cars, you actually want a high coefficient of friction at lower temperatures, and that's because, you know, your pads and your rotors aren't gonna be getting that hot. You're not uh, stopping constantly, so if you get off the highway, uh, your rotors are essentially cold. You know, they've got a little bit of rubbing on them, but really they're not that warm. And so you wanna have that high friction immediately so you don't have to wait for them to warm up and you can stop quickly. So thank you for watching and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.